Welcome to another episode of the Stellar Sound Podcast, the only podcast relatively unknown to Earthlings with rocking it and all the interdimensions, space traveling radars to empower creative musicians everywhere. I'm your host, Larry Paulson, and today I'm excited to be joined by Looney. But first, to what become part of our interstellar presence, find us at the StellarSoundPodcast.com on all social platforms at Stellar Sound Podcast or, jo- or join our astronauts in the Stellar Sound Discord community. Links are in the description down below. Looney is a Danish Swiss electric singer songwriter r- residing in Great Old Britain. With a classically trained discipline and strong self motivation, Loon has become a driving force in music producing circles, sharing her knowledge on social media and presenting personalized lectures with Girls Make Beats. Looney, welcome at the Stellosphere, and how are you today? Thank you so much. Um, I am doing, uh, yeah, I'm doing good today, thanks. How are you? I'm doing great. We had a bit of uh, technical issues before we uh, started this interview, but I think we can get the ball rolling now and just get into it. Um, but for everyone out there that does not know you, you were not born and baptized as Looney, but instead you were born as Laura. I think I'm pronouncing it correctly, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, you started your musical journey as Laura, and then as you grew as a musician, you kind of adopted this entire new name or persona. Um, and in your YouTube series, Life of Looney, you talk a lot about the name and its creation and even how your partner kind of coined it, if I, if I can say that without letting him uh, jump in into this conversation. Um, but I want to know, why did you decide to fully embrace this name as Looney instead of just keeping it as a, like a lovable nickname? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think, well, just to give everyone out there a bit of backstory. So I have a partner that is a little bit older than me. And when we first met, I had this obsession with unicorns. And I still have that. I still love anything unicorns. And kind of before it became popular, but it just sort of stuck. <laughs> and then uh, when I moved in with him, I had this like massive teddy bear, if you, like a unicorn teddy. It was one meter 20. And I just like... Um, I really needed to have that with me. I was like, do you know what? I can move in, but I'm going to bring my unicorn with me. And, um, <laughs> you rock up with this giant teddy bear and he's just like, cool. Exactly. He's like, what the hell, man? Um, it's now with the charity shop. I wanted to, I gave it away to a kid's charity shop if I felt there was time. But um, So when my name came from that, he was like, I should just call you Laura Unicorn because my birth name is Laura. And I was like, Laura Unicorn, I kind of like Looney. And I was like, oh, I really like that. So I don't necessarily think it just... It just became a thing that I was just being called. And for some strange reason, it just felt more like myself rather than my birth name, Laura. I've always hated Laura. I felt it was really common. Everyone else is called Laura. Like, because I had uh, a lot of people in my class was also called Laura in school. So I was always called my surname, which is Hanka. So I was never really called Laura anyway, other than like my immediate family. Yeah, I mean, that's very interesting. I like the story about the teddy bear. I mean... We've all been there, haven't we? I think out of personal experience, I think I rocked up to my husband's house the first time as well with just teddies and he's just like, you're a grown woman, right? And I'm like, screw you. I'm bringing my, t- I'm bringing my stuffed toys over here. Come on. <laughs> I need my stuffed toys. Thanks very much. Yeah. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Oh, that's a really, that's a, a interesting because if uh, we're going to speak about this um, later in the interview, but your whole uh art concept on vibe i want to say with your music is very mystical and unicorny and i want to say pastel powerful lovableness and everything so it's it's interesting that you drew it from that name and how your name is kind of inspiring your music as well but then i want to throw it way back you started as a classically trained vocalist with uh, the danish national girls choir Mm -hmm. and then you immigrated to britain where you did um the evoke ensemble um and if you listen to your music now, you wouldn't necessarily say it's choral music, but I want to know how did your choral training contribute at all to the style of your music that you are creating now? Oh, I love that question. I think it's it's <laughs> sort of created a foundation that I didn't realize I needed later on, if that makes sense. So I had a lot of music theory lessons. Like we did a lot of concerts in that choir. It's basically like... It's a very prestige choir in Denmark, and we would have sixty concerts a year. So there was a full wow. on plus two sessions, like two sessions of practice of three hours each week. So it was a really big dedication. Jeez. But what it taught yeah. me was not only to like 
play piano really well because you had to play an instrument as well um it taught me so much about like creating harmonies it taught me a lot about like singing really well music theory that i now can use to my advantage so even though it was flipping hard work so i'm not gonna swear on a podcast um <laughs> safe space safe oh, yeah. space <laughs> um I'm, i have a bit of a potty mouth so i'm so, sorry in advance um no, I think, so that gave me so much that I didn't realize that I actually can use to my advantage now. So now I feel it uh, very easy to come up with vocals, for example, or create harmony mm. backing vocals and things like that. I love it. I love utilizing my voice for more than the melody. And I think that's where I bring that on to my electronic stuff is that I want to utilize my yeah. voice in different ways. And Use it as an instrument rather just as a vocal point. Uh, vocal exactly. point. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it's, and I think it's been very organically that way for me because I've just been singing and singing and singing but also listening I think one one thing is to actually sing another thing is to listen the way you can place yourself in your instrument whether that's voice or guitar or piano whatever yeah if you can place that instrument in relation to other things what you hear it's going to be so much easier to record um, and I think oh, well, that's yeah. something I didn't realize was going to work well for me until I actually sat in it it's interesting how you put that. I never thought about it that way. And then as soon as you said, I'm like, yeah, wait, right. That makes perfectly sense yeah. to put it that way. Because it's scary when you yeah. record yourself for the first time. I hated listening back to myself. Then I, honestly, I was like, I cannot listen to this. This is shit. <laughs> and you know, yeah. if you hear yourself super dry, it sounds like awful. And I just, it took me a long time to be okay with the sound of my own voice in the recording. Just hearing your own voice. Yeah. Oh, Yes. Uh, it's like for everyone out there that does actually go and record for the first time whenever I took some of my students to go record the first time they would like completely just have a little tiny meltdown in the booth because like why do I hear myself so well I'm like that is what it's it is yeah. <laughs> you've got to get used to this it's okay you sound great but <laughs> it's, also, it's a whole new skill isn't it because I did a, uh, a sound engineering I don't really do sound engineering I find it really boring and it's not my great skill but um, I did a really small job as a sound engineer. Um, and they was yeah. recording some like fairly good singers, but the, we were doing inter individual tracks to stack it for their performance and stuff. And there were so many of them that they couldn't tune when they were hearing themselves back. But if they were to sing it just out loud in the room, it would be perfect tune. But as soon oh, as yes. they had the headphones on and could hear themselves, they couldn't, they mm. couldn't sing in tune. And I think that in itself is actually a skill to learn. It's not something that just comes really? organically necessarily unless you've practiced it. So I think so many great artists and musicians actually struggle with the start of sound journey just purely because they haven't learned the skill. And that doesn't mean they're not great. They just have to accustom to it. Learn. Yeah. They got to, they got to, it's a, it's like people think you just walk into a booth or a recording studio and it's bam, you sing into it and it's beautiful and everything just magically happens. It's such a skill set to be a recording artist. It's not just, it's not, it's not performing live. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't get that. There's such a, it's, it's a skill. It's exactly as you put it. It's a skill that you've got to practice, learn, fine tune everything. And it's just practice, practice, practice. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to sound like the typical music teacher, but practice, practice, practice. And then eventually um, it will. And if you think about electro pop specifically it has kind of become the unofficial official soundtrack to most videos on instagram uh, and i want to know do you think not to put you in a box or anything like that but do you think maybe that electro pop as a genre and music in general has become devalued because it's compressed into a sound bite in the background of some random dance video Oh, that's a big question. Um, and a really valid one as well, because I think I've been speaking to a lot of people about this recently. Mm. And I think I don't think it's been devalued, but I definitely think there might be a different purpose for music in a different way. Um, I definitely agree with you on like or like there's definitely will be sort of the non-emotional music. Yeah. Like if you listen to a song and you're like, mm, it sounds just a bit blah. I can't really feel what mm. they're saying, the words of the story that stuff you know when you hear like a really crap advert and you're just like oh uh, get this over with skip 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 or when you're in the gym that's the worst music <laughs> however that being said i think 
it's just the, it's just the world is changing you know and i think we need to change with it because yeah you're right it's not what it used to be we didn't you could sell albums like you could bring cds to your gig or yeah. i would like go shop for vinyl that was really exciting so for all the young like, kids now out there use my vinyl player yeah. you know what i mean yeah. like now it's retro to have a vinyl yeah i have loads of vinyl but i hang it on the wall as artwork mm. i don't play it yeah um so I think it's just changing the way you utilize music. But let's face it, like the world would not be the same if there weren't for music. I have music on the lot when I cook, when I'm around the house. And it's a daily know. part of everyone's life. It's inescapable. You just, you can't help exactly. it. You can't help it. Uh, but I do like how you put it that it's, they are obviously the unemotional and just, I'm going to say, random songs on TikTok and Instagram that you do just want to skip or um, like you put a gym music that's a good description even though it's a bit mean but I mean it's a good description but I like finding the randomest artists on TikTok and Instagram and they're just falling in love with their music and then a lot of artists that take songs that you wouldn't want to listen to and they cover it in their own style and you're like damn like I found I'm not someone's gonna shoot me but I'm not the biggest Taylor Swift fan. I'm not a Tay Tay fan. Tay Tay is not for me, which is fine. Like, everyone can't love everyone. But I found this girl that does Taylor Swift songs, but she throws it into like a very ethereal minor. And all these cheesy love story songs that I really cringe inside when listening to. I'm like, oh, it sounds so great now. <laughs> like, well, go, yes. <laughs> so that's what I love about the social media side of things. And it's, I wouldn't have found these people if it wasn't for the social media platforms and um, once again we were talking with a couple of musicians at Birdcage Radio and we said that it's so funny that they, they used to be when releasing music it was as as if the studios copy pasted a lot of artists you had to mm. be let's say bubblegummy poppy you had to dance a certain way and then you had 5,000 types of Britney's or 7,000 different styles of Sum 41 or, you know, it was just, a, it was a very yeah. copy paste, cookie cutter type style with each era that went on. And with the rise of social media and social media stardom, we see such diversity in the music, such strange figures, such norm core figures, such, it's like, it's, there isn't a style and a, a, a vibe that's not represented um, and then sometimes I think, and I want, I want to know your view on this, but there's so much diversity that the diversity has kind of become oversaturated and you just want something normal. Or is that just me? <laughs> oh, I think there's definitely a little bit of a fad to be like, oh, I'm going to be totally different. And I think as an artist, you're always going to be different anyway, because you're yourself, I think. Um, but I think it's more about being authentic. I think mm. for, for a while I tried to be someone I wasn't. Yeah. I tried to be someone else and or just maybe not someone else I was just trying to be a version of myself that didn't feel natural to me yeah. because I was a bit worried or oh, what if people think I'm boring mm. where exactly. I think what I yeah. don't like about social media is in inauthenticity when people just try to be someone that they're not so I think it's not I love that there's more diversity because we need people to be we need representation of all sorts like what we don't see we need to create more of right mm. but at the same time it needs to come from a place of being who you are like yeah. what comes natural to you rather than Raw sort of oh, authenticism i'm yeah. gonna try play this figure unless you know there are also artists out there that just have this alter ego you know like for example lady gaga that's just oh. who she wanted to become be this controversial um queen that wears a meat dress and you know do all these like, bonkers things yeah but that's what she's known for that and that might have been like her alter ego but for me I want to showcase who I am as a person, an artist that's fairly much the same person. Mm -hmm. um, but that's because that's who I want to be. I think it's a, it's very true to what you said there, that uh, as when we climb onto social media or when we are f uh, creators on social media or even just YouTube, not just social media, um, we're scared of being, we have that fear of, am I interesting enough? Am I... Um, cool enough am I you know would I would I gather audience and then you try to be a little bit inauthentic as you put it and it's usually those that are very raw and authentic and just their true self that usually create better content if I can put it in that way and then obviously you do have your shock your shock people like Lady Gaga but then 
if you also see her transition from she did the shock thing, she did the online or the 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 stage persona thing, and now she's still that little bit of weirdo queen of the weird, but um, she's also become more of herself through it. Um, you don't see her anymore with a lobster and off on her forehead going for brunch or whatever. Um, so I think she, if you if we look to her as a kind of um, role model inspiration whatever it's a fine to make a shock and a big entrance and be weird uh, if you want to but just remember that um you can dial it down you can be yourself more and you're gonna still create perfect things um mm -hmm. i want to be you're, you're very active on social media and tiktok in general um i want to is there anyone that you think we should be watching right now that you would recommend Ooh. Oh. <laughs> oh, big question um i thought I about it too oh i'm like God. i don't know i don't know uh, on the spot um so actually tiktok i'm trying to get back into my tiktok last year i started my tiktok and i was like so active in the beginning i was like all i was doing all day was like creating these tiktoks do you know what takes the longest the flipping editing it's <laughs> so long um and i hate editing so um that's like i need to get back into it um and sort of grow that bit more but i think who was i seeing the other day that i thought was hilarious I can't even remember her name. However, it was mm -hmm. I found it really funny. Anyway, she was um sort of creating sketches on well, I think her name's Haley something something. Anyway, she's very popular in the UK where I live and she basically has creates these sketches about your lady parts and how they interact with each other. So when you come on your period, yeah. your bladder will talk to the uterus and it'd be like, Yeah, it's this time again, la la la. I love and her. And it's sort of, I think what I love about TikTok is that it normalizes this like imperfectness there is in being a human. You know, the, the thing, the videos that did the greatest for me on TikTok was the ones that I literally recorded like randomly walking down the street. Not the ones that I spent a lot of time on, like editing, you know, look really nice, good angles, blah, blah, blah. Didn't do as great. So I think something that I've learned from that is that people like the little bit more randomness. They like to see who you are then. Mm. I think also since becoming a mama, I've seen lots of women that are sort of embracing motherhood and seeing other women go through the same thing as you, or just oh, other yes. people go through the same thing as you. It's very refreshing. They should feel like you belong. Like, oh, I'm actually all right if, if this also happens for me. I'm not so screwing up entirely. <laughs> exactly you know? okay yeah. actually do all right yeah <laughs> yeah oh it's so funny it's so interesting you say about language because i think that's what did really well for me on tiktok because i'm danish mm -hmm. and it's so weird people always think i'm dutch let me just talk about that for a sec she looks oh, dutch. Seriously dutch and i'm like yeah i do look dutch mm -hmm. but it's like i have i have no idea what people are saying it's very strange f phenomenon for me because it's the sounds of the words yeah sound very similar but but it's like nonsense i cannot understand a single word so i always get really confused when i hear dutch because i'm like am i not getting this right are they speaking danish and i just can't understand it oh. or with us it's now um there's the western part of um the, the netherlands sounds like afrikaans just a very high grade of afrikaans and then the word order is just switched around a bit but the eastern side the side that i live in is they have such a thick accent that you're just like what uh. <laughs> And it's so close. I always say that I'm going to get arrested for this at one stage of my life. So I'm keeping it light until the day that the cop showed. But I have a small obsession to go and stalk people online on their social medias, especially artists and musicians, because I like seeing their day to day lives. Because I feel obviously when you post something on social media, you're portraying something, you're staging something, but still there's like a little grain of truth in each post and you kind of see like the behind the scenes of the musicians' lives and what quotes they're using or what music they're using in the clips, etc., etc. So um, I went onto your social media platforms Go once again it. and I grabbed a few pictures uh, and photos and then I'm going to try and screen share them and then... I just want you to like tell us a little bit about the behind the scenes, the stories of something maybe that's not in the taglines. Um, sure. But for those for those listening, head on over to our Stella Sound uh, podcast YouTube page or join the Discord community to have a look with us. Okay, and this is the tricky part. Every single time, I need to attempt to share the screen, and every single time I get it, but this time I got it real quick. 
Yeah, I'm a tech expert. Yeah. Okay, let's start with this one. I'm going to try and zoom it a little bit in. Yeah. <laughs> this picture. Let me just zoom a little bit more. <laughs> no, just show okay. This is a, a great picture. I'm just going to put out there, love the dress. So that's, um, <laughs> yeah. it's not glittery, sparkly. I actually put sparkles on it and a footwear effect afterwards. And oh, it actually looks, <laughs> and I, I wish, it, it is green though. And for those who cannot, who, who thinks that I'm absolutely pissed in this picture, I'm actually sober. So um, I know that's a big surprise. I was the only person at this party <laughs> being sober. I think I was doing like a sober October or something like that. Um, yeah. And I went to this awards. I used to work for Universal here in the UK. And we went to this very specific production music awards. Never, It's never going to get more niche than that. Basically, oh, all yeah. the music you hear in the background of TV adverts, TV shows and things like that. Mm, I worked mm. for, for that department within Universal. Yeah. And they had this in like individual awards. <laughs> and that was that party. Um, and yeah. And... Uh, Sober, really? I don't want to sound I'm sober in that picture. So judgy or something, <laughs> but sober, really? <laughs> Even my face looks picture. absolutely like gobsmacked. I look like I'm pissed, but I'm not. Yeah, it's a great picture face. though. Sober or not, I mean, it's a great picture. I was like, damn. <laughs> it, it looks like you were at a New Year a New Year's party though. But yeah, I wish it was more fun than it probably was. A quite actually was a really boring party, if I'm honest, because it was sort of like one of those things. Oh, try to smooch the client so they use our music rather than the competitor ah. sitting at the other table. And I just I just find that that is just really superficial. So you had to be like, oh, hi, how are you? And you know, hi. The people that you don't really yeah. care about. So, yeah, it was, um, it looked more fun in the picture than it was. Oh, great. I love this picture. On your, I think, I'm, ooh, I'm going to like paraphrase a lot or just misquote you, but on the picture itself, you wrote something about the mermaid is back, and I feel that tagline. This is very smoky, ethereally, mermaidy. I don't know, but and I did not recognize you at all. I think it's because your hair is a little bit more flat in here. I don't something know, the or the angles on, yeah, on, on the pool or something. I'm thinking this is pool. a great picture. Do you know what? Yeah. This is just one of the iPhone filters that my boyfriend used on me. So we were in, last year I was in Bali for five months, which was amazing. Oh, wow. Yeah. And we went to this like beautiful, um, just by the coast. And there's, we had mm -hmm. like, Bali's is basically paradise. But there was like a pool, like if you can then view, like sit in the pool and look at the sea. So we were in the pool just um, looking at the sea and he tried to take pictures with my phone. You know, the different filters that are actually on the camera yeah. on a phone. Yeah, yeah. So I think those is one of those. In... It's beautiful, yeah. though. It's a great one. Well done, boyfriend. Good, good on him. He takes good pictures. Good on him, eh? Right? <laughs> Mine. Oh, he's going to hate me. My husband can take a picture to save his life, okay? Those those memes where, or those, uh, I want to say, short videos where the woman takes the, like, the perfect picture of the husband and the baby and they look like so gorgeous. They can be in a magazine. That's me. And then my husband takes a picture of me and it's just like all the <laughs> angles are wrong and everything. So we're the, we're the opposite in our relationship. Like he's like really good at taking pictures. And I'm always like, here's a good picture. And it's like, I can't take pictures as well. No, no. Like honestly, every time I'm just like, I'm going to just do the picture myself. It's just, I'll do a selfie. It's yeah, okay. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Don't worry about it. I can figure this out myself. Um, okay. And then this one. Oh, I love the pink, pinky purple. And I think you might be wearing the same shirt dress in one of your concept arts for your album covers or yes. single covers. So yeah. that was taken on the same day. Um, it was um, because oh. the um, Sound Road record label on this picture and they sent their social media person, they're from Sweden, so they sent them to London and we took loads of pictures and lots of videos on that day. So I have a, quite a lot of content from that particular shoot. And we found this like little alleyway in central London and took some pictures. And I think I put like a little filter on that one though. But um, I just oh really yeah like it's just a slight little colors, just Lightroom app. And and oh. yeah, it just we took so many pictures. So I just always love using really good uh, press pictures. If anyone wants to do a lot of like photo shoots for the social media, I just recommend yeah. bring a couple outfits. You don't actually they use like a proper camera, but I would just say. I've done my artwork pictures for my music. I have used one of them was like on an iPhone. You know, you don't actually need a big mm, camera to mm. take really good pictures. So we would just, I would just take a couple outfits with me and we just change like in a random cafe toilet 
to yeah, the different cool. outfit. And it was really cold that day. Yes, you can't tell, but I was freezing my ass off. I Aww. had to cover up my nipples because this is like a backless dress. Yeah, and I was like, yeah. okay, my nips are going to be out. So I'm just going to have to like find creative ways to cover them. Play with it. Just play with the necklace. We cover up the boobs. It's okay. Exactly. And I'm also five months pregnant. So I was like, I'm, I don't really have a lot of options for clothing. That's why I have this You're dress You're pregnant on. in this... Yeah, I'm five months wow. pregnant in that picture, you, and I could I couldn't even call. I, this is a dress that's quite loose, so you couldn't see the bump underneath yeah. there. But uh, sorry for the baby crying in the background. Um, ah, it's okay. <laughs> but, um, the trousers I was wearing for the other stuff, I couldn't close them, so I was like, I'm just gonna wear a shirt on top, and nobody's gonna know. Wow. So just completely off the record, you look very skinny in your face. I didn't. I, mean, I didn't I, gain a lot of I weight so until bloated. the last month of my pregnancy. I only gained. I think at that point, I'd barely gained any weight. Um, I was um, very lucky. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Great. You look great for someone that was five months pregnant. Right. The face. It was second Please trimester glow. The glow had arrived at that point. The first three months were awful. I was sleeping and I got like severe acne when I got pregnant. Oh, same. That's just like, been edited away in there. <laughs> okay great so it's not just me no. <laughs> i feel so much better <laughs> okay this one seems a while ago because your hair is very shorter oh yes um, i shaved my head at some point so that was actually oh. my uh my assessment for my university degree we had to do a gig i had to do a lot of things so that was my exam and mm. a few i think it was like two months before this i shaved my head so i was a hair model for a long time when i moved to london because I wasn't. I didn't want to pay to get my hair done. Oh, okay. So okay, I was yeah. a hair model. I had my hair bleached so much. I had lots of different colors. I had purple, pink, silver. You name it. I loved it. I love my silver hair. My favorite one was pastel pink, like peachy pink. I loved it. Oh, but it was a yeah, bitch yeah. to maintain. Anyone out there who's ever bleached their hair know what I'm talking about. And then at one point, it started falling out. So I was like, oh, but literally literally fall it was so embarrassing i remember being at the shoot and they were like oh you know i said let's pl- please chop it off because it's falling out and i was begging yeah. them like please just chop it and they were like oh before we do that can we try to make like do this um cut for like an asymmetric bob sure for this client and they did that it yeah. looked awful by the way um, and they were going to like style in from this client. And I could see him when he brushed my hair, all these like literally like I had chemotherapy. I haven't had chemotherapy. I'm fine. But yeah. I was calling out and I had so much hair. You can s- s- tell he was like trying to like I hide it, it from the client that they were watching. <gasps> it was so embarrassing. No. And then after, I'm not going to say the name of the academy because, that, you know, they, their karma mm. will get to them. But afterwards I said, please chop off my hair. I've been there for hours. Like, please just chop it off. And they were like, oh, we can't do that in front of the client. So they lit, literally lied in my face in front of the client and said, oh, yeah, I'm going to chop off my hair for charity. Um, so we're just going to film it and you're going to like cut it off. I was fuming because I had never said anything like that. They had literally screwed up my hair. And I'm not really that bothered. Hair will go back. I have a lot of hair. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. But I was just more yeah, the fact that they didn't like, they were just lying to my face in front of this client. That's a really heightened uh, shampoo brand. So they cut it off, but... Th- based on the fact that they had to sort of like cover up that they fucked up my hair anyway long so short yeah. i loved it because it was also one of those like i've just broken up with someone i was like mm. fuck this i want to be a new version of myself so i'm just gonna shave my head and it was such a liberating moment i loved it it was easy to wake they, up it was yeah. like they aren't ready there's this quote i'm gonna misquote it again i'm so bad because but there's something like there's something dangerous about a woman that shares of her hair it's like a thing yeah it's definitely like, a thing it's i think it's just sort of when you realize that i think for me i had always had a lot of identity attached to my hair i was always laura with the long hair laura with the blonde hair oh the girl with the long hair and i was just a bit tired yeah. of being the girl with the hair so i think it just gave me a bit more confident in just being myself i was like do you know what me without with or without hair i'm still the same person so that was a very liberating moment. However, the growing out phase was quite awkward. <laughs> okay, but I mean, the, the hair in the photo looks great. Do you maybe remember what song you were singing? I think you were singing an original song of this. Uh, oh, they were all originals. They had to be. Um, I can't remember what song I'm, I was singing there. Probably something that I've forgotten now because that's like five years ago. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> I can imagine yeah. I just feel like I think yeah the basis is just feeling it in the background. You, you can feel you was just jamming. Yeah. 
like his face it was just like yeah, yeah damn. <laughs> i don't know face face yeah. uh, <laughs> face face uh let me just give you a quick uh quick notes what is happening okay i want to go backwards apparently okay this one Oh, that's one of my first gigs in London. Oh my God, that's such a long time ago. Um, so that has just started my hair, my hair model journey. Um, and I think that's somewhere in Camden. I think that's the second gig I had Ooh. in London, which was just that was before I actually start producing properly my music. So it's just me and piano. Okay. And acoustically going for it. Exactly, and that piano is my own, and I traveled with it on the bus. And I will not recommend that for anyone out there. Just get a fucking Uber. <laughs> Don't. It was like with a literally sat yeah. on the shoulder in the back, and it's like sixteen kilos. Yeah. It's like fluffing about with a full like long yeah. eighty-eight keyboard. <laughs> You just rocking off with a full keyboard on the metro yeah. as a back. You're that person, that, person. That, that you know the stereotypical that you see on the metro with an instrument, Literally. but then just not like a tiny one, like the, the biggest actually, instrument you could possibly have. Do you know what? I have no sense of fashion, so I'm yet to learn that. I think actually in that photo, I am wearing um, what do you call those like underwear, like skiing underwear as trousers. That is, I, I can't oh, even, with a yeah. shirt on top and then a black top and then the sequin blazer. So, but I think also I was wearing the heels on my way to the gig rather than take a bag and put some like trainers on. So I was oh, in heel, no. heeled boots on the tube with the piano in, oh, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. Um, you have talked on, um, your YouTube channel and uh, even on your TikToks about uh, a little bit of your mental struggles and coping methods, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I want to know what has been uh, your biggest mental health struggle while recording your singles, uh, Lion Lace and Parallel Universe. Oh, um, I think, first of all, we all have mental health, just like we have physical health. So I think, you know, if you, let's say you think that's mm -hmm. the day you wake up, you're not you're feeling a bit achy, your body's not feeling great. There are also going to be mental days like that. And I think it's just normalizing the conversation. Like we all have. We all have it. Mental health is not a, it's not a diagnosis. Mental health is the health of what's going on in here, just like your physical health. But I think what I think a lot of artists also maybe have challenges with this is the it's the whole, am I good enough? Does it sound the way I want it to sound? Yeah. What will people think? It's very, also a little bit of ego. Just like, oh, I want to, I want people to like me. Yeah, because you're and putting yourself out there. what if they don't? Yeah. yeah, and the music industry can be very harsh. It can be a very, um, it's a tough industry. People are going to judge you for anything. Literally. Like, you're not going <laughs> to be this enough or be that enough. Maybe you're too much, you know. There's always going to be someone who has an opinion of you. And I think it helped me when I sort of separated. <laughs> it helped me when I separated the sort of what I sing and what I record and my single versus who I am as an identity. Okay. When I separated the two, it was easier to sort of make a decision when my song was finished instead of saying, I am my song. But of course I am the words because I created them. However, this is how I express myself. Yeah. It is not necessarily all who I am. Music is a way of communicating for me. Music is the way of I express myself, yeah. where I'm still my person outside of music. And that really helped me because that way, if somebody doesn't like my music, it doesn't necessarily mean they don't like me. It might mean that, but it might not. Mm. Mm. That takes me and to you are, I want to say, the founder, CEO, creator, mother uh, <laughs> of girls make beats <laughs> what is girls make beats um and how did you start that so that came about really randomly as things are in life so last that yeah. company was birthed last year um where i was really fed up with my job and my partner was like why don't you just do your own thing and i was like that's scary, but this okay. This guy, he's, he's um, like, there's, he's the I, genius behind it all. <laughs> blessing. Like, honestly, he's been helping me so much. I would not be where I am if it hadn't been. Yeah. Um, um, so I, I've always wanted to help other women. So for me, my production journey, being independent as a music creator, took me a long time. It took me, like, I'm nearly eight years in, in yeah. that journey. And it doesn't need to take eight years. 
It really does not. And when I started out producing, I didn't see many women. I didn't feel like I had support. I had no idea what I was doing. And I didn't really sort of like, how do I, how do I go about this? I don't understand. I am, I felt like I'm a really talented artist and musician. I just don't know how on earth to get what is in here out on the software out into people's Mm. ears. And I was fed up with relying on other people to sort of explain what I wanted them to like create and not for fully me. getting and, like, it. Then I had to yeah. they don't they didn't get it and, and I didn't couldn't explain it and then suddenly I had to hire a studio and then had to pay a fee here and that and it's, it's just that was just not sustainable. And it, I hear it over and over and over again. So I was just like, I'm gonna find a way to help women with this stuff. Um so I started just teaching like just doing private lessons just like literally all online i haven't i did a couple in bali i did a couple in yeah. person which was amazing as well but it doesn't it's like it doesn't really make a difference like online or in person doesn't matter it's either either or yeah. can work um and then i set up a workshop for more people to see if like do people want this is this not even gonna, like is it going to be popular i yeah. don't know and there was a lot of, a lot of people on that workshop it was just like 45 minute workshop and i was like oh it's actually and i really enjoy it this is amazing so that's how that came about. And then I have created an online course now uh, where people can sort of watch those tutorial in their own time with lots of demonstrations yeah. and things like that. And sort of taking you on a journey from how do you find your creative process? How do you create all of your music independently from home? Yes, you need you do need some gear, yeah. but I'm a believer that you can create with what you've got. You don't need all of these fancy oh, big yeah. studios, and it. Yeah, of course that that's nice if you can have access for that but, to that, and yeah. you feel great in that environment. But like for example, my last single, Parallel Universe, right? I recorded the lead on a random Tuesday night on this floor <laughs> in this room. I was like, I'm just gonna record it, you know. And then after I thought, oh, I, I want, I want to quote-unquote proper sound recording of the lead we'll call so i hired out a studio i hired an engineer that could help me sort of press the buttons while i was in the vocal booth to save time i recorded everything again there and my record label said like oh we don't like that version we prefer the version you did on your floor version at home (laughs) so i was like Mm. i went away went ahead with the floor version and that just like proved to me you don't obviously you need a great quality of sound recording obviously you do but it's not necessarily where you're going to get that you might not be in the studio if you don't feel comfortable in a studio or singing in front of someone you don't know that you can't hear yourself properly like that's gonna yeah. be shit recording yeah if you feel great at home do it from that there's so many so that's how that came about yeah i love it because also yeah there's also to go back to what you said is like you don't always you can't portray fully always what you want to someone else mm-hmm. um especially if you don't have Absolutely. the skills um to actually produce it so if you gotta like go in with every little no do this little higher put i want this 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 to like fully portray this it doesn't come through as as it already sounds in your mind um and mm. you give such um even on just tiktok and instagram they're very correlated together you give such um good tips and tricks just short ones so i can just imagine just to take the course what you would learn just bite-sized chunks yeah. I, li- I, I love what you said and i think it's also even if you don't want to be a producer mm. such i think there's something about being ha- being in charge of your own music yeah. being empowered to say if even if you are to work with a producer but you can say i want this i want to you know i want the eq to mm. be like this i want the, oh can you add this and this in here i don't really like the way you've done that that's going to send off a very different signal than to say oh i'm not really sure yeah. Like, if you know what you want with your music, whether you're creating that yourself or you are utilizing someone else's skills to do that, that's going to play in your favor. Yeah. And I have never regretted learning music production, even if I end up not producing something because I wanted to work with someone. Mm. That gives me power to say, yes, I want this. No, I don't want that. I want it like this and this and yeah. this. And I am more respected that way as well. I have noticed. I think that is why I also now I'm building my network a lot bigger. But I feel confident in it because I've practiced it, right? You've done it. If, yeah. if you're an artist, and yeah, exactly. But it's taken me a long time. I'm no one special. I'm here to say that the reason why I've founded Girls Make Beats was because I want more women to feel empowered with that too. It's not a special gift. Amen. Like anyone can learn this stuff. 
it's not and it's not that yeah it's it's learning a new language of course it is but it's really not that difficult okay the next section that we want to move on to is called behold the meteor shower so this section is to keep you on your toes um okay. and give you a little bit of uh, rapid fire questions and hopefully not get you cancelled in the process <laughs> but i think these are light questions so i don't believe that okay. anything bad will happen i'm gonna just i'm a bit nervous <laughs> okay go on yeah. <laughs> safe space safe space um okay are you ready for the meteor shower i am ready okay here we go i gotta just get in the zone for this if you could be an instrument which would you be double bass double but that's a new sorry <laughs> we've never had that one <laughs> Just put me on the spot. Okay, SpongeBob or Patrick? I don't. Neither. Neither. Watch it. <gasps> oh, how are you? Well, okay, we'll get back to that. We'll put a pin in that. Agree or disagree? Pineapples belong on pizza. Yes. Yes. Which movie has the best soundtrack? Oh, oh, uh, 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 the Help. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Uh, which friend's character are you? Rachel. Rachel. No, I'm Phoebe. Phoebe? Yeah. Oh, I love Phoebe. Okay. Um, <laughs> which is better, Instagram stories or TikTok reels? Instagram stories. Um, Sia or Aurora? Aurora. Oh, I love you. Good choice. Good choice. <laughs> I'm not supposed to be biased. Good choice. <laughs> <laughs> um, who? Okay, this is, a, this is a, a mouthful. Who would win in an epic battle? A polar bear with a lightsaber... Or just a regular T-Rex? I'll repeat the question. Who would win in an epic battle? A polar bear with a lightsaber or just a regular T-Rex? I'm going to go with the, with the bear because it sounds cooler with a lightsaber. Right. I, I thought that too, right? And this one. This one gets everyone. And you're only allowed to name one. I have to preface that and be very strict with that rule. Only okay. one. The best song of all time. Uh, but Joey V, Living on a Prayer. Oh, that's a good choice. Oh, that's a banger. Like, it's like it's like the Sweet Caroline type thing. There's no one on this planet that does not start singing along. If they, if they, if they're exactly. And also, I used to listen to that track before any really important work call. Or if I was just, if I had like a prospective client call, I'd listen to like, put it on a really fucking loud dance jump Just to the go to crazy the hype yourself up from joey v yeah it's a good one i love oh good choice i approve <laughs> I can, i'm gonna put my very unauthorized stamp of approval on that one yeah it's gonna, it's gonna be stuck in my head as soon as i end this call it's gonna be done it's gonna be stuck in my head for the rest of the day obviously yeah yeah okay Fellow astronauts, I want to remember you to follow us in the Stellar Sound Discord community or head on over to Instagram for the latest Stellar updates. And with that, I would like to thank you, Looney, for co-piloting this rocket ship today. But before we check our engines, I want to give you a chance to shout out any platform or projects before we go. Thank you so much for having me on this episode. It's been such a pleasure. If you want to learn anything about production, be a part of a community, or just want to get in touch, like just go to my Instagram, it's at just.looney, and it's L-U-N-I. And I'll be more than happy to help you with any production needs that you might have. Awesome. Definitely go check it out. You will not regret it. And go listen on Spot. I'm going to just plug it for you. Go listen on Spotify to Parallel Universe and Lion Lates. They are incredible. Thank well, you. listeners... Um, it's my pleasure. Well, listeners and fellow astronauts out there, from me, Leonie Paulson, and my guest, Looney, we want to thank you for joining us here at the Stellar Sound Podcast. But the countdown has begun, and it is time to blossom into the stellar sphere. Until we meet again at the next stage.